This year, my business has really taken off. We just clocked 300,000 in revenue, and in all honesty, I feel like I'm only at the tip of the iceberg. I get asked a lot about how it all works and how it all makes money. And if you ask most people, I know they'd probably be like, oh yeah, he just posts TikToks and Reels on Instagram. But behind it, there's a machine at work across multiple channels that's intricately designed to both nurture my audience with content that helps them to get the outcome that they want. We then have products, services, and sponsors to further serve our audience and of course make some money. And I can hear you going, Sammy, well, what the hell is this business? Well, it's this one that you're on right now. It's a personal finance education business that lives mainly online, although I do do some public speaking now, which is definitely in person. And my goal is to help the everyday person learn the stuff they should have been taught in school, investing, making money online, managing money, that kind of stuff. And I've spent over 15 years now in marketing, taking businesses from startup to multi million but this is my first baby that I'm building out on my own and I love talking about money and business. This business was three years old about a week ago. About a week ago. Hey! And the first 20 or so months, I was building it on the side. So I've only been full time for just over a year now. To be clear, I'm an open book when it comes to business and I firmly believe it should always be that way. I can't stand it when gurus hide their best tactics behind paywalls. If you want to copy me, then go for it. Now you're probably thinking, wow, he must have done some pretty groundbreaking stuff here to get an online business to 300k, but that's where you would be wrong. Good businesses and the marketing they do isn't about rewriting the book. In fact, the best marketing campaigns we've ever seen are piggybacked or adapted from cultural ideas. Take Heinz's naming of products first made popular by Diet Coke in 2014. Brilliant idea, now used by multiple brands or taking popular bro phrases like, what's up bro? And Budweiser turning it into a legendary commercial. What's up? So yes, I use the best bits from popular culture and other people's business because why wouldn't you? What makes them unique is the combination of tactics put together. So in this video, I'm gonna break down exactly how my business works, including the revenue streams and the amounts. Hopefully you can get the inspiration you need to start your own thing, as I certainly would have loved to have geek out on a video like this when I first started. First up is the revenue breakdown. So let's run through all the revenue streams and then we can build out on them so you can see where they're actually coming from. We have, to get started, affiliate marketing, digital products, coaching, public speaking, brand deals, sponsorship, advertising, which I include things like website ads, link exchanges, and YouTube AdSense, and I think that's about everything. So. I know it's a lot, but some of these are the main performers. Let's just do a super clear breakdown so you guys can see it. I've rounded up the numbers to the nearest thousand to keep it simple. And just to be clear, this is revenue from January 1st until October 1st, 2024. So digital products has made 96,000, affiliate marketing, 54,000, brand deals, 48,000, coaching, 47,000, public speaking, 24,000, sponsorship, 19,000, and advertising, 12,000. As you can see, it's a pretty nice spread across multiple revenue streams, but digital products is by far the biggest, and in my opinion, the one with the biggest potential. So let's break all of this down so you can understand what's in each of these categories. Let's start with digital products. So we have a range of products from low ticket PDFs and templates that range from anywhere from seven pounds to 47 pounds, and we sell a handful of these a day. And then we have two main programs, which are video courses and communities attached to them. The first is 123 Financially Fit, which actually only launched in September. And this program, is dedicated to helping beginners with everything they need to know about money. It has a community where I do monthly Q&A calls and people can ask questions in the community which sits on Circle. This will be an evergreen product and that's available at all times. The second main program is very different and this is called Creator Academy and this program is designed to help people launch their own online businesses, mainly through social media. So we teach hundreds of people now how to create content, make digital products and scale it up. And I'm actually switching that out to cohort-based learning to provide even more support for people people there too. And this program runs and launches at different times of the year, so it gives the influx of students the maximum amount of attention. Next up, let's talk about affiliate marketing. Now, this comes from a range of different places, mainly through our social media, which generates around 3 million views a month, but also through our newsletter, which has 30,000 subs. The website also gets around 10,000 organic visitors a month too, and the podcast does around eight to 10,000 downloads a month. And this YouTube channel as well, which is now pretty small, but 
is a big, big focus for me moving forward right now. Now, our partners include investment platforms, saving apps, banks, mortgage providers, and basically we wanna send people to things that actually make sense. The key is here that it has to make sense or you end up annoying people and losing trust. So it's a very fine balancing act with affiliate marketing. One of the ways I do this is to use short form content on Instagram with a provider called ManyChat that allows me to contact people via direct message that engage with a particular post. This has been huge for me and something we could be doing even more with. Next up, I wanna jump into brand deals and this is pretty simple. This is where a brand basically asks us to create a post, usually a video about their products and we do this mainly on Instagram and TikTok. Now I try to keep this finely balanced as I don't want a channel to become basically too far from education and just be like this interchangeable billboard, for example. That being said, we can earn up to six or 7,000 pounds a post depending on the brand and that product, but usually they sit around three to 5,000 pounds per post, which for 90 minutes or two hours, that actually creates the script, film and edit that video. That's not bad at all. Next up is coaching. So connected to the Creator Academy, which is our flagship product right now, I have a higher ticket coaching element, which is still in its infancy, really. There's a lot of scale in that. We work one-on-one -on -one with people that are bought into the program to offer further support and give them further coaching that helps them move a lot faster. I'm quite excited about this actually in the future as I wanna bring in coaches and sales teams to help scale this even more. Now, next up, we have public speaking. It does exactly what it says on the tin. Businesses hire me to come and give talks on personal finance for their teams. Funnily enough, I've done a lot for financial institutions and banks, plus things like the NHS and charities too. And I love these gigs. As you get to meet the real people, you know, you get to meet them face to face, ask real questions and understand what they're struggling with. And yes, it helps from a revenue perspective, but I just love hearing what people are actually going through. And it just makes our content strategy so straightforward and so much better as well because we're getting it from the ground. Now, next up is sponsorship. So I break this one down into a couple of parts, one being podcast sponsorship. So brands pay me to deliver ads for them on the podcast. We've only had a handful of these as our numbers have only been really worthy of that in the past few months. But again, these pay very well with brands taking one to 3K packages to three to four episodes. And another one here is sponsorship of our newsletter, which again is in its infancy, but we still have a solid stream of brand sponsoring. And again, this is something that I want to grow as our audience grows with it. Basically together, it's like a trifecta. The bigger our audience grows, the bigger the revenue we can bring in. And last but not least is advertising. So this is mainly coming from website traffic. We have ads on our most popular blog posts and we monetize that for a company called AdThrive. We took a bit of a hit from organic traffic from Google, which is pretty volatile to say the least. If you have a website on Google, you'll know exactly what I mean by that. And I won't go into it, but essentially a lot of sites got hit earlier this year in Google updates, including ours. And we've made a few hundred pounds on YouTube AdSense as well, having only really just become monetized a couple of months ago. And I expect that to grow enormously as this channel grows. Now, next up, I wanna show you where our audiences are currently at. Now, first up, we have 160,000 followers on Instagram. Without Instagram, our business would be nowhere near 300,000 year and it's responsible for the vast majority of the business growth and that is why I'm actively seeking to diversify basically into YouTube and further expanding the podcast and I'll talk more on that in a second. Short form growth has been wild. We were at five and a half thousand followers in December 2023 and was at 110,000 by the end of March. There's 100% been changes to the Instagram algorithm or just such an influx of content coming out that growth has been slower over the summer but I'm still very happy where we're we're at basically. If you'd have offered me 50,000 followers by now in, you know, if we chatted last December, I would have chewed your hand off. And the main strategy here now is to hugely increase the following, but equally to get people off the platform and onto the newsletter. The newsletter and YouTube are my two main focuses for growth in 2025. Now, TikTok is a lot slower and this is at 13,500 followers, but in all honesty, I just post there because I've already made the post. It's so much harder for me in personal finance to get people off the platform and onto mailing lists as they don't have things like ManyChat which facilitates that DM feature and people just use the app a little bit differently. They scroll through lots of videos, they tend not to take as much action through like things like link in bio. But however, I am super excited for the growth of TikTok in general, because if they do allow the sale of third party digital products through their store, then wow, I think there's some big, big potential there. Very much one for me to keep an eye on, but for now, most of the money is coming from Instagram. Then we have a small LinkedIn audience and Twitter or X or whatever you wanna call it these days. And once we expand the team further, a real solid LinkedIn LinkedIn strategy would 100% be drawn up, but we just don't have the bandwidth. 
bandwidth right now. YouTube has been growing fast. Last month we had 1.5K subs and we were getting around 400 to 500 views a video, but I feel like we've now turned a corner. We've just done 50,000 views in the last 14 days and are now putting out videos every few days when before it's been pretty sporadic. Something which YouTube is key for, for growth, basically you want consistency. Now, next up I wanna talk about the challenges. First challenge for me has definitely been manpower. There is so much that I want to do, but without the help, there's just not enough hours in a day. Revenue meant basically we only hired our first member of the team in April. First one was the full-time editor to help with the kind of content output and raise the quality as well. She's been absolutely incredible and a valuable member of the team already. Big ups, Daniel. I know you're gonna be watching this. But second hire was Chris, who has also joined us to help us with our daily operations. He works heavily on building out things like the funnels and the project plans for new programs, project managing the launches, and just all round business support. Now, as we grow a bit more, I definitely wanna bring in some social media help to basically answer the hundreds of DMs that we get a day and further editing support and coaches as well to help scale the high ticket element. We have some contract staff now too, which we're taking on for the podcast because we took that in person this month. And I wanna create the best personal finance podcast on the market. So that has meant outsourcing some of the work to a podcast producer and a short form editor. Very expensive, yes, but hopefully it will definitely be worth the investment in the long run. So for me, having a high quality podcast asset is such a hack. Basically, as people spending an hour with you once a week build such a high degree of trust, like you are in their ears. And it's also meaning that we'll have two YouTube channels and two Instagram accounts now. So we will need full-time support in the very near future if all goes to plan. I'm also gonna be looking for full-time brand sponsorship for the podcast and growing it hugely throughout 2025. It's a really cool case study as well to run with the Instagram account. And sure, yes, I've grown my main one, but if we can do it again with a new one, that's gonna be pretty great for things like the Creator Academy as a case study. I'm feeling pretty confident about that actually as the content looks pretty sick. Now, the second major challenge has been split focus. I definitely get shiny object syndrome just like anybody else and fighting this has been a constant struggle. When you run your own thing, you spend hours alone and that is challenging in itself, but you also get that, oh, I should be doing this as well as this, as well as this. And I definitely suggest to anyone still here right now, just to double down on one thing and then double down again with one style of content, one thing that you make that really works. So if it's Instagram that you choose to stick with, then great. And create one style of content on there. For example, voiceover content or reaction content. Don't be a jack of all trades, nail one thing. And this has definitely harmed the growth as I could have just stuck with what was working back in March earlier this year, but I wanted to test myself creatively. Now I'm actively going back to what was working before and doubling down there. So if you take anything from this today, take that. Now the third major challenge is switching off. When you a business like this, it's not just addictive, it absolutely consumes you. Don't get me wrong, I love it, but I spend 99% of my time thinking about it and I have to remind myself to switch off and spend time with my partner too. I would literally work seven days a week if you left me to it because it generally feels like I'm playing Xbox when I build businesses or marketing campaigns, but you do have to learn to pull yourself away. Now, even a small trip to Sicily earlier in the year was a big reset for me and I came back with tons of ideas that I would never have had because I don't normally allow myself or my brain to switch off. I also listen to my body a lot more. So I know I work well in the mornings. I am one of those people that wakes up early. Yes, I know how annoying. And I just switch on in the mornings. So my mornings are pretty sacred for me and I get the creative work done during those times, leaving the afternoons for the more admin-based work, for example. Now, if building an online business like this sounds like fun to you, then I definitely suggest checking out the Creator Academy. There's a link in the description below. We open enrollments for it every few weeks as it's cohort-based learning. So if it's not open right now you can register your interest for the next one definitely check that out in the description below so next is my business goals for 2025 the growth this year has been pretty crazy, hyper growth in fact, but that's the beauty of online businesses. They experience like hockey stick like growth. Nothing much happens in the first year or so. You can make some good money for sure, definitely in the thousands, but because I'm building across multiple channels, it's actually taken me a lot longer than just say doing Instagram or just doing YouTube, for example. Something which I think I have to live with, but once they all click into gear, it's gonna be an absolute beast of a machine. Now, next year, I want to double revenue at the absolute minimum and all the infrastructure is there. I'm reinvesting the majority of the profits into adding to the team new content, new systems, which will just make things run a lot smoother, more efficiently and make more money at the end of it as well and help more people. That is the main thing as well. We really want to help more people. That's really the premise of this business. Help a lot of people and eventually be paid 
mood for it. I definitely want to move out of the trenches and become more of the talent here and less you know, doing the daily things, which sounds horrific to say, I know, uh, the talent, yeah, oh, but it's what's needed for us to actually grow across all of these channels. I need to be the face of the brand. And the big one to crack for me in 2025 too is paid ads, which I think could help us to seven figures and beyond, but I'll leave that for another video roundup. But I do think a brilliant video to follow on from this is my how to go from zero to 10K a month in under 12 months workshop, which is coming up now on screen. Screen. It's a biggie, it's a full one hour and 20 minutes, but it's a proper deep dive into the first steps of launching an online business. So head on over there and I'll see you guys and girls on the next video. Peace out.